guys, I'm Racing Chewy Side, and here's a track guide for Kentucky. Now I know I skipped Daytona, but it's Daytona. There's not much to learn there. So here we are at Kentucky, the old bumpy version. Not the fancy new repay, so... Yeah, we're still bumpy. Which makes it one of the more unique one and a half milers. Flat, abrasive, bumpy, and so on. And since I got bug, you know, like crazy, here's the keys of the race card. You'll see something new that's pit road speed. It's going to be 50 miles an hour or yeah, I have no clue what that is in kilometers. That's like 80 through 90. I have no clue. But that's not going to be technically a point that's going to be at every track. So number one tires as usual because it's an abrasive track. Number two. Hell, I don't even know what number two would be. It's a bumpy track. Multi-groove racing, I guess. Hell, I don't know. Number three is probably going to be something to do with, like, pit entries a little bit. I would say tight getting in. But it's also not, you know, difficult. But it's a little deceiving. You kind of think you can go further and then it kind of just comes up on you. But anyways, that's, that's it. We'll show the pit exit line right after this. And then we'll go ahead and get to the lap. All right, now that we did that, here we are about to take our lap. Now everything might look a little different again because I just couldn't settle on a field of view. So it went down to basically what it ran a couple years ago. So that's why everything looks a little more zoomed in, except for I kind of moved my seating, you know, my seating position to a uh, you know, further bank in the thing, but it also still keeping the field of view. So there you go. That's why it looks weird. Anyways, fix that up. Nothing's been changed. Except for the brake bias. I went down to 63, 64. Somewhere, you know, somewhere in that range. So, let's go ahead and take this lap. Right, the apron there is optional if you want to get that speed. That's why let's back that up. So you may have noticed I wasn't running on the bottom. And that's just pretty much the way this track is. It's been like that for quite a while, but yeah. Anyway, the setup's ass. At least I think it is. People seem to find it okay, but you know, it's not because it's loose at all. It's, it's a tiny bit coming out of four, but that's beyond the point. The car's just so tight that it eventually breaks these, but that's just, that's just my bro. I hate tight race cars no matter what, so here we go into one. Now right, you can see I went all the way down to the line there, then back up, trying to get, you know, set up for the entry. And, and if you notice, this entry is a little, like, I backed it up a little bit because you really don't want to throw this car in there. It doesn't like it. So you can see once I get it, basically lined up with the wall here I start braking and I'm turning back down and I'm using this amount of brake as you can see down there and you just want to use it to get the car slowed down just enough and you're going to want to let it roll the rest of the way until you get I would say left side tires under the first screw seam so right where I'm pointing my mouse I'm letting it roll all the way down there you see I'm still trying to turn now now here you can probably get away with riding along the seam, but I just found uh, going down here was slightly better for me. It's just because it's kind of using both transitions. And you can see once I got down here, I'm on the gas. And if you can see, I'm not sure if YouTube will allow, will allow for this, but if you can see it, there's a little line right here. You can barely see it. Hey, right where I'm moving my mouse, that's where I'm pretty much right where the tires are. And that's where I'm picking up the throttle. 
Now you can go all the way down to the wheel of line, but I think it's just you're scrubbing off too much speed and it's just not going to work. But anyways, once you get done to the seam, you can pretty much stay on the gas and power down the back stretch. Now into three here's an option. Now if you didn't decide by here what you want to do, either ride the yellow line or move up a groove, then you, I don't know, you're just going to have to improvise if you don't decide by then. Because it's just, you got to make your decision here. So here I decide to go with a half groove to a groove up. So I can, I can actually throw it in just a little bit later, but if you want to go to the bottom, you got to let off right around where I'm at. But I'm using the brakes right after that. And again, like we didn't turn one getting into set. There's a lot more bumps going into three, so it's not going to be very happy. But once I hit those bumps and got it to turn in, I'm off the, you know, off the brakes and the gas. Just let it roll again to the second seam and we start picking up the throttle to make sure we don't lose too much speed and then pretty much stay on the seam and use it to drive your way out. Now, if you're kind of in the middle, like you saw what happened there, I got a little bit loose. And that's going to happen. It's probably going to get worse later in a run, but you know, not to say the setup really isn't terrible. It's just not, it doesn't fit me, you know? And then you just power off and go to the line. And like I said, you can go to the apron, which I does. I think it does cheat a tenth or two off. I mean, I wouldn't do it every lap, but so you get the point. So there's a 30.362, and that's pretty much the best I'm going to get. I can't go any faster up. I've never been very good at this track. Now, I don't know what track we go to next, but hopefully we'll do that, and we'll have the keys to the race car and all that again. So, yeah. Anyways, I'm racing to your side.